So it's the fourth game. We don't unfortunately know the score at this moment in time. Um, if Jaeger finds anything on uh, the Discord, he will let me know. Um, uh, yeah, sure. We have a pretty classical matchup. We have uh, Julian Case spawning on the left side of the map, and we have uh, Kinesi playing as Japan on the right side of the map. Uh, Brits versus Japan. Now, this is an interesting one because I, uh, depending on who you speak to, will tell you who it's favoured. Um, I often hear people say it's Brit fa it, Brit favoured, uh, but I've also heard that it's Japan favoured. It, it, it depends how Brits play it. Now, I've seen Brits play this, you know, uh, semi sort of FF or go for a VC boom, you know, mass musks and then get the two Falconets. I've also seen Brits do a longbow slash pike rush. Uh, which feels like it's quite difficult for Japan to deal with early on. Uh, what do you think? How do you think this matchup normally goes, Jaeger? Uh, well, both of these uh, saves can just basically tear. Uh, well, I can't really say tear tail, but they can boom really nicely, uh, just due to the fact that I guess everyone knows Japanese. They don't need to just walk outside of their base except for the mining just because of the uh, save bonus, so they only gather from the berry bushes, and the, uh, they use the hunts to build shrines to get extra resource trickle. So basically, that will be a mini factory on each shrine, which are their houses. And on the other side, the British, with each house that they build, they get a settler, that, and that's the civilization bonus. So I, 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 that's why I say it's just like almost the same uh, matchup that we are saying so it just depends uh, what the players decide to do either go for H2 uh, pressure or just go for the fast fortress and then just go for the H3 uh, artillery and uh, these sort of uh, plays but we'll see yeah so looking at Julian's deck it does say 1v1 longbow so he's got that exotic hardwood which is always a, a complete giveaway to anyone looking at that deck and I, I'm sure Kinesi will have a look at that and see that he potentially wants to go for longbow pikes so uh, could be seeing a longbow pike uh, early action which I definitely I definitely agree with I have seen this matchup play plenty of times before I don't really play Japan I've played Brit somewhat um, in a previous life, so I understand roughly how they uh, play, and I do think Longbow Pike is the right thing to do in this matchup. Uh, so we'll see what the Japanese player can do. Now, this is Kinesi we're dealing with, so we'll take a quick look at Kinesi's deck. Um, nothing's ever standard with Kinesi. Uh, going for Heavenly Kami, uh, so that's interesting. His deck has more uh, refrigeration, okay. Um, he's got that for standard four flaming hours. So Kinesi being Kinesi, I imagine we'll potentially see uh, plenty of pillarless walls. We'll see lots of Yumi. We'll see a very kind of tight packed uh, kind of Sim City style gameplay with him. So, you know, he's got all of his buildings in it, like utilized as a sort of wall, which it looks like he's already started to do here. Um, and then, you know, he's going to try to make as many Yumi behind those walls as possible and uh, defend uh, like his life depends on it. So I imagine that's what we'll see from Kinesi. Uh, you know, you, you're always going to get something interesting with him. He's a very good player. He likes to do some, uh, you know, he likes turtling. He likes doing some unique gameplay. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a good slobber knocker, I think. Game currently paused. Oh, yeah, we've got a pause. I guess from either side, I don't know who's pausing the game, but we just have to wait for it. And also, can you uh, put the UI inside the, I mean, the timer, basically? Sorry, yeah. Um, can you let me know which one it is again? Uh, it's uh, Control 6. Control 6. So I guess... Uh, you just mentioned that Kinesi is going to turtle in, but I guess if he knows Julian K, he wouldn't be really willing to uh, pull the game for the late game because the longer the game gets, uh, the more uh, scary and deadly Julian K will be just to, uh, due to the fact that he's a really... Uh, well, he's the best 3T player at the moment, so that's why you don't want to pull the game to was the late game because he can just pull out some crazy artillery and unit micro mm -hmm. so that's i guess that's not what you want to do yeah um by the way i'm not sure what my overlay is doing but it's yeah it's just not 
having it at the moment so i tried to put the thing to stop the time but it's just not playing it so i, I guess i'll have to try and sort that out um after this match um, oh sorry uh, uh control eight i guess it was the key sorry that was control eight yeah okay there yeah you. Is that worked? Uh, yeah, it's back. Excellent, good stuff. Okay, so a little bit of lag going on. Uh, this doesn't seem too bad though. Um, we've only had a uh, little bit just here and there, so that's great. Um, yep, Japan just doing their standard thing, putting out as many shrines out on the map as possible. I do feel like this looks like quite a decent map for Japan. Japan like maps where it's quite difficult to access the shrines and take them down. And we've got lots of these kind of natural choke points here on this map. So you've got this river here. There's only kind of certain points that you can actually walk through. So uh, it's quite a wide map as well. So if we take a look here, you know, these are these are kind of behind the base somewhat, you know, up, up to the side. So depending on where uh, Julian puts his FB, it could be quite difficult to access some of these shrines. However, these are going to be well within reach if five pikes just go around and siege here. So that's nice. Uh, like we said, <laughs> classic standard walls coming in for Kinesi. Uh, that's definitely his play style. Julian's going to try and utilize Sir Cunningham here just to try and kind of get in the way of some of these walls and, and make it as difficult for Kinesi as possible to uh, get those pillarless walls up. Kinesi's done this so many times. Just these pillarless walls are just absolutely beautiful. Like, there is not a single gap in these pillarless walls. So he knows full well how to how to do these really perfectly. Look, like it's just absolutely uh, beautiful pillarless walls. But you know, people do dispute pillarless walls and uh, if they should be in the game or not. Um, however, they are. So um, Kinesi taking full advantage of that. Going up with the Jasoga Shrine, pretty standard stuff. Um, I imagine we will see uh, Yumi come out. First card's going to be 600 gold. That doesn't seem too standard to me. What do you think that indicates, Jaeger? Uh, I guess maybe just also because he's uh, massing wood, I guess he's just gonna place down a, a Barrax and then try uh, to go for the... Uh, I don't know. I, actually, no. I, I guess he could go for a stable and go for the Nagis due to the fact that I mean, I guess as soon as he see Julian K's deck, he knew uh, he knows that he's trying to go for the uh, longbows mass. So I guess uh, he could go for the Nagi mass to uh, answer for that. But he's going for double coin chip, and that's interesting, though. Yeah, um, really not sure what that's going to be. I'm sure we'll see soon, but he doesn't have a military building out at the moment. Could we be seeing an FF here? Yeah, I think that's the case. Yeah, it, I'm pretty sure that's the case. It's... I mean, at first I thought he's going for, he's going to answer those Yumi's, but uh, apparently no. Nope. Well, there we go. The Shogunate is being placed down, and he's gonna have it. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, not quite sure I've seen uh, this sort of build order from uh, Japan before. We'll take a quick look over at Julian. Um, has some longbows out, uh, has one musketeer out. Maybe that was a uh, misplay and, and didn't get the full batch out. Um, yeah, not very many units out on the field for Julian K at the moment. He obviously sees these walls. Um, I mean, the consulate is basically there for the taking. Um, so, you know, I'd probably like to see a few musketeers on there and, and, and that, that would certainly hurt um, if that was to go down. Um, it would also leave, you know, him, him able to take this market down and then, you know, rather than take siege these walls, he could basically use these um, as a pathway in. Um, however, currently isn't. Um, longbows are going around the map. Going to see if he can find anything, but he's uh, unfortunately going to, it's going to be in vain. Um, yeah, sort of a uh, slow start. Um, more musketeers coming out for Julian. Definitely kind of wants to put some early aggression out onto Kinesi, but is, is, is already kind of getting frustrated. Uh, really can't find anything. Kinesi put down a huge amount of 
shrines on the map and cl clearly thinks like that's good enough he'll bring both of these uh, explorers back and you know they they can kind of micro to a degree some of these musketeers so um yeah this is this is just really nice play by uh kinesi here You're going up with the shogunate so um getting that really really early age up going julian's gonna is gonna see this so it's gonna be interesting to see what julian's response is to this because double 600 gold is uh is is a crazy investment um I would like to see, yeah, I, these musketeers need to really be making short work of these shrines. He really needs to take down these. These are just, you know, so easy pickings. Um, and, and, but, you know, that, that would give uh, Kinesi the time that he potentially wants to do something. Um, musketeers coming in now. Are they going to be able to do anything? I think it's rather risky. He has stopped this uh, shrine going up, so that's going to delay things somewhat. Be really nice yeah, if you that could was take a this. Nice decision there. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Julian K is sending the 700 coin himself. And I suppose he's maybe trying to look for the fortress himself as well. I mean, since he saw that the Shogunate is going up, so he might as well go for the age up. Yeah, I think that would be. I don't think that would be a bad idea at all. Um, these musketeers, you know, have done a decent job. I would have liked to have seen that barracks go down. Um, however, Kinesi making uh, good use of those Minutemen. Okay, musketeers potentially going to siege this barracks down now, but that might be a little bit too late. He does know that this isn't going to be built anytime soon. Kinesi's still got a little while before he actually ages up. Uh, there's no villagers on here, so um, yeah, that's really nice to identify. These villagers are going to go for uh, an interesting hike over here. Um, losing two, maybe three. Um, not quite sure what the rationale behind that is. He does manage to get four uh, escaped, but I, I, I'm not really sure it was worth losing the villagers that he did. Um, but yeah, I mean, nice pickup for Julian. I don't know what was that about. Yeah, it was just... Uh... I don't get the idea behind that, to be honest. I mean, it's not like he can't use the hunts. He, he just pulled out the settlers, so... I mean, they're, they're still idle, so... It's not like they're doing anything. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, he's going for a walk now. I mean, that's definitely... Didn't want, yeah, okay, that was a misclick. He doesn't want to shine that. Uh, I mean, I think going for this barracks is definitely a decent idea. Um, Julian knows that the only the only thing he's going to have is uh, the units that pop and maybe some age 2 units that he sends in. Um, so keeping pressure on the TC is, you know, definitely a good idea. He's about to age up now. The Dymo does come out. It's going to run away with his tail between his legs, no doubt. Some Asagari Musketeers coming out. All I think right. just the one. Yeah, this is... This is looking slightly scary for Julian K, but... Oh, at the same time, he's also aging up with the Adventure, so that, that's going to be really nice. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of lag here, which is quite frustrating, but... Uh, yeah, I think uh, Julian's done some good damage here. Uh, these walls definitely bought um, Kinesis some time, but clearly not enough. I think... Julian has uh, definitely has the advantage at the moment. He he has left the shrines kind of out though. That's that's my only concern is that um, all of these shrines are still here and Kinesi is obviously going to be relying on these shrines for his eco. Um, although Julian is on nearly 40 villagers, so if we take a look over to Kinesi, he's only on 22 and they've been locked up in his TC most of the time. So um, I think Julian's definitely got the advantage here. <laughs> Classic Kinesi go for two two flaming arrows twice, so uh, that's that's definitely going to uh, cause Julian some <laughs> trouble to begin with. Uh, has almost nothing to protect them though, um, <laughs> using the Dymo to pop them, which is really nice because they're going to make short work of these five musketeers coming in. All right, it seemed like, I mean. He's going to get rid of those Musketeers, surely. I mean, the Daimyo is doing a decent amount of damage, and also the uh, Flaming Arrows are causing so much trouble. And at the same time, the uh, the crossbows also pop just in time from the uh, Portuguese Consulate. And now uh, Julian K is just forced to go back. Meanwhile, 
Uh, Kanisi is still trying to apply pressure. Oh, no, he's pulling back. A nice raid here from Julian, however. Yeah, these flaming arrows going to basically take down this FB, and I, I really don't think Julian's going to be able to contest this because he's decided to age himself, and Falconets are not going to be able to take these down because Falconets will get outranged. So, um, yeah, Julian, though, picking up a nice four villager raid down here. That's really, really nice. Uh, if he goes down south a little bit, he could probably pick up a couple of more shrines. That would be uh, some really nice play by Julian. So four flaming arrows out now. Uh, what's his response going to be? Yeah, now he's... Uh, I mean, he definitely needs a uh, falconet at the moment because, or at least go for E, go for some hussars. I don't know because, uh, I mean, with the, with that infantry mass, he won't be really doing much, uh, considering also the fact that the flaming arrows can uh, kill the falconets easily due to the fact of the unit counter itself. They have longer range and also they have multiplier against artillery, so that will be uh i mean uh, again i'm not sure what's the idea behind uh, his decision on sending the falconet at this point but uh he should be really taking care of those yeah so we'll see what julian decides to do he's shipping nine musketeers um i think his options are hazards or culverins um, culverins would be really nice because they would essentially eliminate the flaming arrows um, while still having falconets to, you know, take care of um, everything else. So, um, his, his, he now has veteran musketeers, which is nice. Um, you know, still has these shrines out, though, and, and that's definitely what um, Kinesi is relying on for all of his eco. Um, his shrines are currently on food, so he's kind of macroing very heavy on food. Um, had a nice timing, though, with the port consulate. Got those crossbows. Some musketeers coming out. He's got four flaming arrows out on the uh, the, the pitch now. So, yeah, he's got a, he's got a big power spike here. Um, I think if Julian can be careful and, and just, just not allow those flaming arrows to do too much damage, and I think if he can take care of the flaming arrows, he should be in a really, really good position. Yeah, surely that will be... Uh, the case, but uh, meanwhile, also, uh, Julian K also has the option to just go for the uh, the Yeoman card and just have the 25 uh, range uh, uh, longbows. That 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 will be really annoying for the Japanese to deal with as well, considering the fact that it doesn't have any uh, Nagi yet. Yeah, so uh, these two Falconets, they did get some damage on, but yeah, these Flaming Arrows just outranged Falconets, which is really frustrating. Um, what he needs to be careful of is when the... Uh, that's a nice pop-up against that Flaming Arrow, though. Um, but when this Culverin does come out, if it comes out, he needs to be really careful about how he's going to macro it. Um, and he's in a really tight spot because if these Flaming Arrows move just a bit further forward... Yeah, these culverins. He's got to time it perfectly, so the flaming arrows just about fire. If these culverins react straight away, he might just about be able to take them down. So that's perfect timing oh, for Julian K right. there. And there's one. These flaming arrows, are they going to decide? Wow, this is so laggy. What is going on? Oh, God, that lag. It's so slow. I think we're going to have to do recorded games after this. The flaming arrows are deciding to go for the musketeers, so the culverins are going to survive. Kinesi doesn't really know what he wants to go for because the Musketeers are going for the Culverins whilst the Flaming Arrows are going for the Musketeers. <laughs> and I, just like the opposite. like Yeah, right. counters. Just okay. not good micro there by Kinesi. Uh, has one Culverin left, which I think uh, you know, is, is nice. However, he, he's, he needs to be careful. He doesn't lose on the military advantage now. Uh, nice Dymo uh, usage there by you know, uh, being the military shipment point. We'll take a quick look at Kinesi to see if he's got anything coming in. He does. He has uh, He has Cav coming in. And that is definitely going to seal the deal. It's going to take down this Culverin. Um, and this is, this is uh, you know, the score for Julian is still nice. However, um, Brits are slightly inflated. And this is why it was so nice that Kinesi took down this FB uh, with that power spike he had. Because uh, there was two Raxes there. And this is, you know, th that's going to struggle uh, Julian K to really re rebuild that mass and uh, keep keep producing musketeers uh, at the rate he could have been if he didn't lose those two raxes. So, yeah, although he's taken down the flaming arrows, which is which is good, he's still got everything else to deal with now. So, um, longbows popping out. 
Uh, as long as those uh, cab don't catch on, that's a, that's a really nice pop. Uh, does have access to minute though, Minutemen though, uh, which I think we will see in a second. Really needs to get those Minutemen out, Julian. You really need those Minutemen, yeah, Julian. He... Oh god, he's just standing there with the U's. Come on, you need to pull them back. More Musketeers are going to be popping. More Musketeers are coming in from the flank as well. Yeah, he's popping Sir Cunningham back, but he needs the Minutemen out, which are finally coming. But it's gonna he's cost all of his longbows in the uh, in the interim. Ah, oh, only gonna have a handful, two of these longbows back. Decent defensive play by Julian, but he could have called his Minutemen earlier. Not sure this is gonna be enough. He is just about going to repel. Oh, can he snipe the Dymo? No, he doesn't decide to go for it. Is just about going to be able to repel oh. these musketeers, but at what cost? Okay, not a bad yeah. trade for both sides, I think. Well, Kinesi should definitely pull back the daimyo, else he's just going to lose it and he have to pay a lot for him again. So, Julian's still on 47 village, however, so he really hasn't had uh, any damage done to his, to his eco. Um, if we take a quick look over to Kinesi, he's only on 27 vils um, and still hasn't built another shrine um, since, like, almost since he started the uh, the fast fortress. So, um, really needs to do something with his eco if he uh, doesn't want to fall behind here, Kinesi. Um, well, he's sending the seven settlers at the moment, so I'm okay. not sure if he will do another seven settlers after that as well or not, but we'll see. I mean, that would be really nice for his eco, uh, and it would allow him to catch up eco-wise. However, it is also going to buy time for Julian K to kind of get his remass going. So it'll be interesting to see what he adds to the Musketeers here, whether he decides to go for some more longbows, or maybe we might see some cav from Julian. Um, yeah, we'll see what he decides to play out. Nice little catch here as well. Those raiding Ashigarus not going to do too much now. They did manage to pick off one or two villagers. Um, but otherwise not too detrimental to Julian. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's trying to do uh, anything with it at the moment. It's just trying to pull it back, play it safe at the moment because he knows that uh, Julian K is outmassing him, at least for the time being. And his daimyo is not really in a good health, so he needs to be uh, careful for that. It's just letting the daimyo to be idle at the moment so he just regenerate health over second. So seeing uh, some Yabusami being popped here from uh, Kinesi, not quite sure what his thought process around that is. Picking up another villager here, being really sneaky with these Ashigaris, and this is something that is really frustrating uh, for people who play against Japan, is that they have these musketeers that have an extra 0.5 speed more than uh, other musketeer units. So they're able to really get in. They're almost like cavalry units where they can get in, get some good effective raids, and then, you know, just run away without really being um hurt at all so uh, really nice pop however sleeping on the job a little bit here so that's a really nice catch by julian gonna get rid of these really nuisance units here even two of these musketeers you know just running around the map could be a real nuisance to julian k so he really wants to make sure he absolutely gets every last musket there. going for some hustle so, uh, more culverins which i'm not quite sure that's a huge investment and i'm not really sure what um the culverins is for maybe he i mean if you was julian who, who definitely knows how to play japan he would probably understand that those four um arrow uh what do you call them the flaming arrows the, the four flaming arrows definitely came from the card being shipped twice so i'm not sure if that's an overreaction to getting those culverins um so yeah we'll see because that's essentially 1k that's 1000 resources and he had to rebuild the artillery foundry so that's essentially 1250 resources he spent in two culverins which might actually be completely useless um but we won't wait and wait and see looks like it's julian's turn now here to uh try and do some of his own raiding doesn't look like he's gonna find too much other than some uh musketeers himself Little backdoor raid here by Kinesi as well. This could be a problem for Julian. He, he really doesn't want to uh, wait too long um, and probably wants to find his power spike moment very shortly. Otherwise, he's going to be tilting with these raids. As we speak, Kinesi also set up a castle and he's training flaming arrows, which is uh, something interesting. 
Well, it's like what I said, you know, I, I was almost a little bit worried that they, uh, the huge resource investment of the two culverins that Julian has uh, might be wasted. However, um, you know, uh, shut me up. I could be completely wrong and it might be a really good prediction by Julian here. Um, and sometimes that's the way Age of Empires works. You know, it can be a game of chess. It can be a game of risk. And sometimes you just, you know, you have to try to predict what your opponent is going to do um, and, uh, you know, uh, make the counter unit um in advance so yeah i mean if it if it pays off for julian he'll be extremely delighted with that well this is a really scary uh position for kinesi because the shogunate is being uh is under attack by julian k and the the wall is just wide open so he's uh open to attack the uh the shogunate i, I wonder if he goes for like i don't know he's just trying to uh play like five petards or three petards and then just pull back all Kinesi's uh, army to to the other side and just destroy or even this uh, snipe the shogunate with, uh, with some petards yeah so um i do like this uh julian finding like i said he has to find his moment his power spike moment and and utilize on it because it has forced all these musketeers back so um yeah uh Kinesi doesn't want to be found lacking with you know, 15 musketeers trying to raid and trying to find something whilst his whole base is just getting absolutely wiped out. So yeah, these culverins looks like they're going to be really, really useful here. Um, really, really well played by Julian to uh, predict the flaming arrows. And like I said, it's really paid off because Kinesi doesn't have a, a really strong answer now. As long as these culverins can take down that second flaming arrow, there really isn't too much um, that he has that can deal with these musketeers. Um, he does have some hazards which aren't going to be too useful. Um, the, the most useful thing he'll get out of them is probably just doing a bit of face tanking. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, the Dymo doing exactly the same thing. So that's some nice micro uh, by Kinesi there. Just using that to soak up as much damage as possible. The Culverins will do decent damage um, if they get enough shots off to the Musketeers. So he really needs to hold this as best as he can. Does he have anything reinforcing? He has a few Musketeers coming in. However, Kinesi has the defender's advantage now. Um, so his reinforcing batches are going to arrive much sooner. Yeah, I'm really worried about uh, this position for Kinesi because uh, if you uh, take a look at the, the Shogunate uh, HP as well, it's really low. So it's really possible that he lose the Shogunate uh, if by any chance he lose this fight instantly yeah so um i mean japan never want to lose any of their shrines so um yeah that could be really detrimental it's really close uh kinesi is struggling because he is down on score so this is he's having to use absolutely everything he has just to repel uh this this uh push by julian here like using the daimo once again just to try and soak up as much damage however it's not really working he yeah, is kind he, of. He can't reach there. Yeah, it's just the padding is just not there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, really well played by Julian. Um, it was looking a little bit, little bit iffy for a second there, but he he has come out on top. Looks like he could take this down, which would be really, really great. Another ten musketeers coming in. It's exactly what you want to see. Um, the, the, yeah, no, no that, musket. That's going down. Yeah. That's going down. A really nice There's pick up no here way. as well. So if you could take that castle down, that would be really great. So really attacking from all angles here. Yeah, that's a really nice positioning and also decision making by Julian K. Like predicting the uh, the flaming arrow with uh, with the pre covering and people call it in the chat blind cooled. So yeah, that that was definitely the case. And I suppose after the Shogunate goes down, there is nothing Kinesi can do. And I mean, if that was me, I would resign because, I mean, you lose the Shogunate, so... Yeah, I mean, he's still... I mean, he's on 43 villagers. If we take a look over to Julian, he's on 63. However, uh, Japan still has the shrines as well. So he's probably not quite out and out yet. But, you know, the score is almost looking double. So, um, yeah, it could be looking at resign button soon. I'm not really sure what he can do here. Losing that shrine... Yeah, there's the GG, like you said. Uh, Jaeger, yeah, the GG button is called. Um... Yeah, that's really well played by Julian, I think. Um, 
it was looking a little bit worrying for a second like his fb went down um you know and he struggled just just about got those culverins that just came out of the right time uh, and the flaming arrows had just just like launched an attack on the artillery which allowed the culverins to unpack in time and get a shot off both of the culverins to get a shot off before the flaming arrows could even attack them so yeah they're, they're a little bit of luck went on julian's side there um but it, it paid off in the end just just as the blind culverins did and um uh, yeah that's the problem with with you know what kinesi did um and yeah and julian punished him for it so well played to julian yeah ggs and uh i'm i'm not sure if we should just check another live game uh because of the lag that we were experiencing so uh we might be just forced to go for the uh for the recorded file that we have and uh, yeah, he, he turned off the Wu-Sang already, meaning. so I guess for the next game we won't have any lag issue because we will be using the recorded file and also the Wu-Sang is off. And I suppose Lion will be restarting his game at the Yeah, I can restart my game now if you like. I will just sort out the overlay first. So uh, which game? Are we are we staying with Julian and Kinesi and just going to watch the recordings? Um, or are we going someone else? Uh, I, I guess... Uh, the we don't have Julian's uh, Julian K's uh, games at the moment. We don't have the recorded file for the final game. I'm not sure if that was the final game or not. So uh, we just have to check that on the bracket probably. Uh, but at the moment we are going to be observing uh, April versus uh, Ted. Okay. Um, bear with me. I'm just uh, restarting my game. And also, once again, big shout out to uh, Microsoft and Tech Cafe for sponsoring this tournament. So, really appreciate all the uh, sponsorships and also all you amazing people inside the chat that are with us. And of course, Lionheart, who is doing the casting with me. It's a really pr uh, pleasure. And we are getting to the next time. And also, I guess you should be uh updating the ui as well for the next game yeah i will do that now so um who is it is april did you say 